Uh, last time we talked to you from here, we were talking about an oasis versus a desert. Uh, we're on the outskirts of Preston. This is Leyland, just off the M6, just off the M61, 65. So it's a central hub. And we were here last time, the weather was appalling. Uh, we've seen this place flooded on many occasions, but we were talking about the lack of charges in Preston itself and the glut of them that's appearing here. You may want to look at those videos and see what we're talking about. Anyway, so back here, this was before Christmas. We were getting the really bad weather, all the storms were coming through, and a lot of the groundwork was put off till after Christmas. Uh, I only live a few miles down the road, so every time I've got a few minutes to spare, I'll come back and swing by this place and see what the progress is. And the last couple of days, I called here, and I found there's big progress, but it's absolutely belting it down. Some of the storms passing through would seem to be coming with more frequency. But I did notice that some of the charges are in. So we have returned today. Uh, it's a lovely clear day. It's a bit cold. Uh, I've got padded jacket on. Uh, so we're looking at what's actually been done. We're very fortunate. We just met one of the workers here. We don't film them without their permission, uh, but we had a chat with him and he says they're at the stage they're finishing up. Now I'm going to take you on a walk through the site because he was very good. But he says they are going to finish up and at that point they will be out of here. Then the DNO takes over. This is a distribution network organisation, which is the one that gets the power out of the grid and into individual uh, customers, businesses, houses and in this case, uh, EV chargers. So I'll walk you through that in just a moment. But the crew in at the moment, they've done wonders here. They're getting towards the end of the, their stage. And once everything is wired up on individual chargers, they're finished, they'll go. The next people to arrive will be the DNOs. And I'm gonna show you in a minute, but there's a substation over there and that's been brought through already, just a, 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 an unpowered cable uh, underground and it's coming up um, in the corner there. We're gonna look at that in a minute. But we uh, no one can do the connections. The DNO does the connections. And this is one of the big bottlenecks that we have at the moment. The DNOs cannot keep up with the pace of the demand. The government has put forward a proposal that forget the DNOs, as long as they know what they're doing, the installers here should be able to do that connection. They need to apply for the license uh, to get permission to do it. But at the moment, once they got permission, they have to sit back and wait for the DNO to schedule it into the work schedule. So they're trying to avoid that. And if that happens, then as soon as a network like Tesla or GridServe uh, actually gets licensed to do it, they can get their own electrical engineers, highly qualified, fully qualified. They can go straight into the substation, connect one end, straight into the other, connect the other. I assume they'll do it the other way around, uh, but they can do that connection themselves. Now, once either the DNO or the Tesla or um, the grid serve engineers, whoever they are, have got the connection through into the corner. Uh, the DNO disappears out of the equation. And what happens is Tesla themselves have a commissioning crew. These are a team dedicated just to walking on site, finding what's here, finishing it off, switching it on, testing everything, and uh, finally commissioning the site. Uh, we don't know how long that's take because at the moment the DNO hasn't done its bit and we think it's still DNO here. Uh, so we've got a lot of banging going on in background, excuse the noise, don't know what it is, but over there, uh, British car auctions. So I think they're probably battering a car to death. Anyway, back to this. So two stages now, we've got the DNOs uh, who will come in and connect the power up so all the, all the charges are powered and then the commissioning team will come in and they will uh, switch them on, check they're all right, and then sign the site off. Uh, one point to notice here, uh, this is a private car park. There are signs everywhere about parking restrictions. This is a hotel car park. Now, parking I operate here, and that means if you don't register your car, you'll get a ticket. So when you come to charge here, and this happens on a few places, when you come to charge here, it's totally free to charge, however, you need to walk into the hotel reception. 
in front of the reception, there is a screen or touch screen, and you just put in that you're a hotel visitor and you put in your registration number and that switches off the parking eye uh, monitoring. It's all uh, ANPR, number plate recognition, uh, but if you've put your details in there, it no longer tracks your car. So you can charge as long as you want, go in the hotel, have a drink, have a coffee, uh, sit down and relax. The hotel's uh, at your disposal while you're charging. This is part of the deal that Tesla will do with uh, the services nearby. So that's where we are. So we're going to take a quick walk up now. We're going to have a look at what's going on and then I'll run through uh, where power comes and everything else. So if you'd like to follow me, we've got a total of 15 chargers. There are 12 on this side. These will obviously be accessed this way in. Uh, so we will come in, we will reverse up to these in the normal way. And these bays will be marked. Uh, they'll probably also do a bit of resurfacing to tidy it up, but you'll have 12 individual bays. Now these are the V4 chargers. So they have a four meter cable attached to them. And so whether you're a Tesla or a non-Tesla, for example, if you're a BMW iX4, I know these from fact, um, they have the charger point on the right-hand side. They're normally a nuisance when they're at a, non -te at a Tesla supercharger. So they'll be able to pull in either forwards or backwards, and the cable will either reach around the side or down the side. It's really simple. Uh, so these are meant for everyone. There is a possibility it won't be opened up to all non-Teslas immediately. Uh, Tesla have a habit sometimes of just monitoring demand, uh, how popular they're going to be, how busy they are. And as long as they're not overcrowded, they'll open them up to everyone. And that's great because these also have a screen on them and they have a contactless payment. Um, you won't even need an app to operate these. All the V3s, which these replace, you do actually need uh, an app. Uh, but these you can use just with contactless. You won't get the best rate, but you can use it with contactless. So we've got 12 chargers up here. Uh, all the power gear is in the background, but what I'm gonna do is just go over this way for the moment and show you where the substation is. So when we talk about the grid and DNOs, it's important to realize the difference. You have individual, charge, uh, individual power stations. These can be solar farms, wind farms, tidal farms, uh, pumped hydro, can be nuclear power stations, gas power stations, coal-fired power stations. They are all independent. Most of them, I'll come back to that in a minute. They're independent and they just pump electricity into the grid to meet the demand. The grid's responsibility is to receive that electricity and distribute it so it's available throughout the whole of the country from Land's End to John O'Groats, whichever way around it is, Land's End to John O'Groats. So the grid's responsibility is taking in the power and then making sure it can be, can be distributed to wherever the demand is. The DNO's job, distribution network organization, job is to take that electricity out of the grid, uh, which is... <coughs> <coughs> Leave it wrong, <coughs> <coughs> So the DNO's job is to take it out to the grid. Now the grid will be running at 330, 480, 50, 500,000 volts. Immensely high voltages um, because of the distance of transmitting it. As the electricity passes this area at 330,000 volts, the DNO's job is to tap into it, to take a feed, uh, a spur, and to bring it down and put it into a substation. And the substation's job is to, is to just bring the power down to a manageable level. So in the background, that green building there, that's the substation. So somewhere around here, there'll be the main grid, which runs past there. It's like a big ring main in a house. And the DNO will have plugged into the, into the ring main and set up their own power station. Uh, substation. So from that substation that has previously been feeding the hotel which is just over there and that's all plus one 
BP charger. It's the oldest one I've ever seen in my life. The one BP charger, which is a 50 kilowatt. And that's all that substation has been doing. Now, when the DNO tapped into the grid, our ring main, and put the substation there, they would have used a specific size of cable and they would have used specific gear inside that, which was more than sufficient on the day to meet the demands of the hotel. What the DNO, DNO now needs to do is to work out how much extra these charges are going to take. So we've got 15, they're all 250 kilowatts, and they're all individually powered, so they could pull quite a considerable current. So that substation may not, probably will not, be capable of running these charges. However, that has the connection into the grid, the ring main. So what will happen is the DNO will either calculate that the cable already coming into that is sufficient to power these, but the switch gear inside the substation is not. So they will do an upgrade of the substation. If they discover that the cable coming in is not sufficient to uh, run the chargers, they will have to lay a new cable, a new spur, if you like. And when they do that, they have a habit of building a separate substation, which would be just for the chargers. Now that's up to them, which they do. One of the big things that's stopping the development of chargers is DNOs. They are so far behind on installing, it is embarrassing. It's becoming a real issue to the EV charging structure. These lights are ready to go. These could be switched on within a matter of days. The DNO might take a matter of weeks or months before they get round to doing the connection. There's one advantage, and that is once they grant a license and the DNO grants a license, they then have a period of six weeks and they have to get the power connected. So once the license is granted, they're back under regulation and they have to get a move on. But no one has to tell them how quickly they grant that license and that can be the delay. Anyway, at some point, the DNO will go in there and they will make sure that the cable coming in or the new cable that they're installing and the substation and its contents and a new substation, if they're building one, are connected now into the grid. The cables from there are already underground. So they were dug up. Uh, you can see all the cable runs going across. These were dug in a while ago. So the cables are all waiting. We're going to have a look at those in a minute. Uh, the cable's going everywhere. So the cables are there. So once the DNO have done their job and actually connected it at that end, then it's handed back to Tesla and Tesla will just do the work at this end. That's a fairly quick process at that point. So people do correctly say the DNO is a hold up. There has been government legislation recently which is trying to break that. And what they've said is that once you get your license, you can use your own electrical engineers, provided they're sufficiently qualified, to actually do the final connection. And that will just release the floodgates uh, for charging uh, infrastructure in 2024 or 25, whenever it happens. It's not here yet. So at this stage, these guys are finishing off. Uh, the cables are all in place. It's just getting the ring main connected to the substation if it needs more power, getting the substation upgraded so that it can run the chargers, and then these will be able to be switched on. We have here a difference. This is an unusual Tesla supercharger. It's the only one I know which has 15 chargers. Every one is multiples of four, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, uh, all multiples, uh, even numbers. This one's got an odd number. And the reason is that this bay here, which has not yet been installed, and the charger for it is just stacked up at the back there. I know that one looks weird. It is actually two chargers. One's bolted down, the other's tied to it to stop it blowing away. Uh, but with that charger, they'll take it out and they'll install it here. This is a specific disabled bay. Uh, and again, we've not seen these on Tesla superchargers before. Uh, they often have wide spaces where they can use them for disabled, but this will be one which will be labeled up dis disabled. It will have much wider bays. It will have much easier access uh, to get to. So one charger there, which is a disabled one specifically, uh, two chargers over there, and then 12 chargers at the back. 
So we're going to keep an eye on this. It is quite close to me. It's just a few miles away. Uh, and I, we do talk to the guys who are installing this all the time, and they're very helpful. They do like to talk, tell us what's going on. Uh, so sometime in the next few weeks or months, this one is going to go live. Uh, and I'm hoping to get here when the DNOs are here working. I just sort of saw someone for a minute, but I didn't. Um, so I'm hoping to get here when the DNOs are actually here doing the connection. I might be able to talk to them. And we talked to those guys, if you remember, back at Keel Services when they were installing some grid serve and they were the DNOs. Uh, and then finally, when the Tesla commissioning engineers come here to switch the site on, I'd like to be here to try and see if we can get that filmed as a switching on ceremony. Uh, maybe even switch the lights on like Blackpool lights. I don't know. Uh, but it'd be interesting if we could get here when they're commissioning it and film the process. So that's it for the moment. The light's going now. It's starting to get really cold. My hands have just about gone. Uh, so I'm going to call it quits for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so that for future videos, we can notify you they're coming out and you can keep up with us as this progresses. I'm Dave. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe and click the notification bell so we can notify you next time we launch a video. And a massive thank you to all our Patreon supporters. It is your support that enables us to go out and make these videos for you. So thank you very much for your contribution.